Hello, I'm Jung Wan, and today I'm going to show you how to use Elicit for ML research. Elicit is heavily inspired by empirical research, so things like randomized control trials and, and research in biomedicine. So a lot of the defaults that you see in Elicit will, are kind of skew towards those domains, but it's built quite flexibly and it's very easy to extend to other domains, and we have lots of researchers in other domains as well. In this video, I'm actually going to go through things pretty quickly. Uh, I'll link to other videos that do more of a detailed walkthrough of Elicit, but I'm just going to focus on kind of running through an ML use case today. And uh, specifically, I'm going to use one that we needed as a team. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Common Sense Reasoning NLP Benchmarks. Last year, we were looking for different NLP benchmarks to submit some of our models and methods to. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and hunt down some benchmarks that capture, that use language models and um, NLP techniques for common sense reasoning. Uh, I don't need the abstract summary, actually. I'm just going to look for through the papers. This is a survey, uh, maybe survey like this is the kind of thing I'm looking for, an actual benchmark. I'm not sure exactly yet what that is. It's a duplicate. I'm going to star the ones that seem pretty clearly like some benchmarks with some data. I can tell because they are spelled with all caps and have colons. Look, more such things. These are probably all benchmarks and data sets. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that one is. I'll keep it in for now. Okay, this looks good. There's probably like a bunch of benchmarks in here. Um, okay, so this is probably a reasonable start. Maybe some of these papers are not relevant. I can get rid of them later and I can find more later also. Um, what do I want to know next? I want to know what exactly the task was. So I'm going to go through um, and try and extract this information from all of the papers. These are the predefined uh, columns that you can add and the predefined bits of info that you can extract from papers, but these are not going to be really relevant to us. So I will just type in what was the reasoning task? Common sense reasoning. Makes sense. Common sense reasoning. That's not that helpful. Common sense reasoning about entity knowledge, slightly more helpful. Argument reasoning. Reasoning about cause and effect implications, multiple choice. Okay. Okay. Like a little bit more helpful, a little bit more of an understanding of what the different types of benchmarks are and specifically what some of these are. But I think I need something a little bit less vague. Um, so I'm going to think about how do people, how do the authors talk about the task in their papers and what can I say that will get the language model to help me f answer that information? Um, maybe like, what was the task description? What's the task description? Um, oh, cool, great. So yeah, hopefully this will give me a slightly more detailed breakdown. Uh, suite of classification tasks. Okay, a little bit more info. Infer whether a given intervention is reported to either significantly increase, decrease, or no effect on a specific outcome. Given a reason and a claim from two possible warrants, choose the appropriate one. Predict whether one or two is more likely. Okay, cool. So I think I have a better sense now of what the, at a high level, what the tasks are. Obviously, I'll have to like go a little bit more into the paper to figure them out in detail. Um, and I can actually do that. So this one, okay, it looks like this is actually lots of different data sets. They're all listed here. Great. I can read through them more carefully to figure out exactly what types of reasoning are being evaluated by this benchmark. Um, I want to get a sense of like data set size and how big this benchmark is. These don't have any info. Okay, this one is 13,000. Data set consists of 13,000 human authored English claims described in Appendix B. Over 16,000 trained traditional QA pairs. Cool. Okay, so not all of the we can't extract data set size for all of them. I'll have to click into the papers to know whether they're just not talked about in the papers or whether Alyssa just missed them. Um, but it's helpful to at least have two to start out. Um, then what else do I want to know? Is the data set size? Um, I think I want to know like what was the inter annotator agreement? I want to know like did they get multiple people to do the task? And if so, 0.834, 0.67. Not sure if this is actually right. Strangely, sometimes asking the question in the paper itself produces a better or different answer. Okay, it just says it's pretty high. 
seven. I think the 0.67 here might actually be wrong. This one says high 90s. Cloud workers is high 90s. Okay. Um, so that's good because then I know that that's like a slightly more objective task or task that's like at least people agree on. This one seems kind of low. Which is moderate level, yeah. So, okay. So that helps me get a better sense of like how hard is this task or how well defined is this task. And so some of the ones with the higher numbers, um, depending on whether I want a well defined task or a less well defined task, um, I can make I can decide using this information. Uh, maybe then I also want to know what was the model used. Kind of want to get a sense of what types of models did they try. T five large. Something from Hugging Face. Uh, Farm tutor for Comet Bart. Okay. GPT Bert and Roberta. Cool. Um, and then maybe what was the performance achieved? I want to know how good how good the results were. State of the art. What type of state of the art? Okay. Also in the appendix. 90s. I think this is just about the crowd workers and human performance. It's, okay, and it still falls short of human performance. This one surpasses human performance. Maybe a little bit tricky. Yes, 75%. Large pre trained models only get 75%. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is basically how I would kind of systematically find a bunch of ML benchmarks, come to elicit, get a bunch of papers, find some that seem more relevant to what I'm looking for, star them, show more like star to generate a lot more like those examples, then think about what type of information do I need to make a decision about what's the right benchmark for us, what is the task, um, how large is the data set size, how straightforward is the task, what models have they already tried, and what's kind of soda so that I know how hard, like how much room there is to beat it. Um, you know, it's not, I think this is like pretty, would it would be pretty annoying to do manually. Um, and some of this, uh, some of the info isn't like exactly what I'm looking for. Or I need to kind of go in and customize it. But then once you, if you want to do that, you can just download this as a CSV and then go through. And as you're actually kind of like reading through the papers more carefully, make changes to the info. If you're going to do this over multiple sessions or like work with someone else on it, you can share the URL and they can pick up from where they left off. Um, so yeah, that's how you use Elicit for ML research. The end. Bye.